Hey, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. I love having you here. It means so much to me as you're taking towards your goals that you consider tuning into the show and also that you hopefully take action. You sort of write some of these things down, even from a very high level. And research shows that when you're writing things down, it's so much easier to remember those. You can kind of reference those at different points in time. Uh, before we get into today's podcast, we're, we're actually talking about equity crowdfunding and WeFunders, specifically how this creator was able to raise over $300,000 on WeFunder, which is insane, and how you can actually do the same thing and some of the things that they would do differently, some of the things that they led to that raise and kind of what went into that and some of the techniques that they employed, right? Before we get into that, I just kind of wanted to address one thing, and this is actually a bit of criticism, and I think it's actually a valid bit of criticism, and that's why I wanted to address it. So when it comes to this, a lot of the times when we're talking about campaigns and campaigns that are either not successful sometimes, sometimes we talk about campaigns that are mega successful, and there's sort of criticism that sometimes that can be a little bit analytical or a little bit too cold or a little bit, I guess the word is like when it comes to talking about these subjects. And I really do try to bring the story to the forefront of everything that I do. And I think it's important to always talk about the creator and talk about the product and what people are doing. But I do sometimes, I think, also really try to understand what goes into that from the marketing standpoint, okay? So I do think that this criticism is valid in some ways. And honestly, it's one of the reasons why I started the show was to share with you kind of what's working behind the scenes and to provide an environment where creators can be very transparent, where they can also promote their products, and at the same time, help other people that are trying to do the same thing. So I kind of was thinking about this. It almost makes me think of like how a doctor or physician, my dad is actually, you know, did this when he was um, doing his PhD, where sometimes in order to learn a subject, for example, human anatomy, you have to dissect a cadaver. I know that's kind of like a strange metaphor, but hear me out here. In order to really understand the human body from you know doctor or physician standpoint, you kind of almost have to remove yourself from that individual or that person in order to understand the skeletal structure, the muscular structure. If you're studying like brain or like neural anatomy, understanding like the prefrontal cortex and like the different workings of the brain. And it can kind of seem weird to someone who's not part of that profession. Like this person is looking at brain all day, right? <laughs> or they're looking at a human body. How do you turn yourself off or how do you, you know, distance yourself from that? But I really think that's what ha professionals have to do is you have to understand not only from the human element and have respect for for that, but also from the, in our case, marketing element, or in the case of a doctor, to understand like the anatomy component and to be able to study that and to be able to talk about that and to be able to understand problems if you're diagnosing that or what are potential solutions to this issue. And you do that, and that's how research is accumulated. And I think it is to a degree cold, like research in that way, but it's also so fundamental to the knowledge of human history. So I just kind of want to address that criticism really quickly because I do think that was a really interesting point. But that being said, in today's interview, you're going to learn so much when it comes to WeFunder. And this is something I've been studying a lot more. Um, I actually wrote a book on equity crowdfunding, which I will share with you in just a second, but also a free course. So if you want to just kind of begin to learn about this, this subject and you're just kind of like vaguely interested, go and check out this free course because I really try to get you up to speed when it comes to equity crowdfunding, how it works, important regulations and rules you should be aware of, key websites and resources. You can go and check out this link to learn more about that at crowdcrux.com slash equity course. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash equity course. And you can check out that free course there. And in addition, if you want to learn more from the audiobook, you can check out the link I'm about to mention at crowdcrux.com slash equity audio. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash equity. Go and check out that link. You can listen to me read this audiobook, which is a super dry, boring financial subject, but to read that with a little bit more fun, pizzazz, and passion. That being said, let's really dive in and understand the story behind this particular mega raise. Go beyond the numbers, go beyond the 600K that was raised plus the more than 500 investors and really understand the story of why this is fundamental to the future of human history. Let's hear about it. It's coming up right after this. If you're worried about the fulfillment and shipping part of your Kickstarter campaign when it comes to Getting out all those perks and rewards to your backers, rest assured, I've put together a complete Kickstarter fulfillment and shipping checklist for you, and it's free. This is sponsored by the folks at FulfillRight, and they thought that you should have this checklist as part of your arsenal going into a crowdfunding campaign. If you want to get instant access to this checklist, and it's free, you can go to fulfillright.com slash checklist. Again, that is F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com slash checklist. 
fulfillright.com slash checklist. Just go to that link and you can download it immediately. Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Today we have a mega WeFunder campaign that has attracted more than $500,000 under regulation crowdfunding, under equity crowdfunding, has attracted more than 500 investors for the first urban wind turbine that lets you save up to 82% on electricity cost. And today we have Anna here on the show. Anna, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. Definitely. So to get started, what is your role at the company? A co-founder and CEO. And in terms of you really participating in this company and kind of getting started there, when was this founded? How long have you been working there? Can you tell us a little bit of the story? Almost from the very beginning. So the company started in 2016 and I joined this year in 2016 as well. But a bit later, so first two other founders made it happen and started running. And then I joined in a few months. And what made you decide to really pursue this vision for the company and to really get excited about that? I guess both the team itself and the idea because I feel that it's really needed. I'm excited both on the whole renewable um, area market and the idea of luck for the urban solutions, Mm. uh, which can give power to the cities because cities is uh, like the consumption of electricity in the cities is huge and it's growing obviously and urban environment is growing because people are moving to the cities. So solutions are lacking. And I saw a huge need for this kind of product. And yes, was really excited for the vision. Maybe you could also just describe for the listeners a bit about how this urban wind turbine is different from everything else. Yeah, sure. So basically it has a bit different principle of work translational uh, movement, not rotational one. And this different principle and different design we made, it makes low noise and vibration, so it can be installed safely near people and it doesn't have any discomfort being around. So it doesn't create infrasound or some, you know, just being noisy and uncomfortable. You can easily work or live by. As well, the construction is modular, so it's very easy to install, it's very easy to service, and it's very easy to scale. So basically, we can adapt the product according to customers' requirements, to the nominal wind speed, based on location, and to the power output. The price is very affordable, and we have leasing options for the customers as well. And it's one of the very appealing points as well. We have a lot of questions about uh, the um, recyclability and our product is 100% recyclable. So it differs from the traditional wind turbines, which are not, and the blades are generally buried in the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At what point in time did you begin to think about, as a company, doing a campaign on WeFunder? Um, around a year ago. And kind of what spurred that discussion? Because this is a whole new way of raising funds and engaging the public. What kind of started that discussion? Before uh, that period, we were using bootstrapping or angel investments. And we got to the point when we started thinking that we need to attract more money. So we need to deal with the VCs. And we uh, start talking with one of the VCs. And uh, he actually gave us uh, an idea that we can use WeFunder as the crowdfunding platform because we are interested in community as well, not only in attracting investments. We realize that this is a cool idea because we can communicate with more people, we can understand better what market needs and wants, and yes, build community, not only. What did it feel like as a team when you were just getting ready to kind of hit the on switch and put this campaign out there. What were some of the feelings that you were having leading up to that launch? Mm, excitement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was uh, a lot of work done before. So we were really excited to get started. Yeah. 
and, and walk me through as you went live, kind of what happened and particularly as people started to take action on the opportunity. Actually, our start wasn't really good one because we had some uh, delays from the platform side. So generally, when you uh, get started, you're a new company and we founder. So you got to the email list also, and you are announced as a new company. So some investments, you know, come in and gives a boost to the campaign. But we got delayed for, I don't remember exactly, three or four weeks. So basically all the time we were running all our own resources. So we're using our uh, database, our emails, and we are trying to, you know, give it a boost by ourselves. So yeah, that was a bit stressful, but still it, it was going. So that, that was giving us inspiration to, to continue, sure. And then there was a boost. Exciting, exciting. So you basically had a little bit of a rough start, but then it sounds like you kept persisting, kept at it. What were some of the other things that you were doing after that struggle period to really get people on the page and to get people to be aware of what you were doing? Updates, updates. First, actually, um, from the first point, we didn't start making updates. We didn't understand the I don't know, the necessity, the importance of the updates. But then we realize that a lot of people start following. They are not investing, but they are following the page and uh, they, they want to see the progress. And we start updating like twice. That, that helped as well. And in- that, that helped in terms people saw that something is going on. We, they saw the progress. They saw some extra information. We were given details. So on the pitch deck and on, on the website, the information is more general and there is a facts. But then on the updates, for example, we start to give more details about the facts. So we start, for example, explain why our aerodynamic efficiency, because we are highly efficient. Uh, why is it like that? So what stands behind it? What is so different in our construction? And what are the results of the simulations? What is So we gave some engineering perspective and... Uh, we explain that it's not just the you know numbers. There there is a logic behind it, and there is why it is like that. And yeah, j- just given more details about like we were actually thinking about what were people asking because people were asking us on the page. And people were emailing us a lot, asking questions. So we start analyzing what kind of questions they ask and we start giving them answers on updates, not just, you know, answering with the line. Yeah, we were answering, of course. But when you answer, like, on the ask page, it's just a few lines. But when you give an update, you can give a lot of examples, you can give graphs, you can, you know, just give details for people to understand. Did, did that um, surprise you that so many people were interested in really the nitty-gritty of understanding the product and what you were doing there? It didn't surprise us. You know, we we didn't know exactly what kind of details people would like to know. So we we were waiting for the questions and we were happy to answer what was interesting the most for them. And to be honest, it's just... Yeah. What is interesting. I mean, it's so much work to put together a pitch, right, and a video and all these things that it's very easy to just forget you know, some things and stuff like that. So I think it also yeah. helps in just filling in some of those gaps, right? Yeah, for sure. So in some ways, that's, I mean, it's also kind of like you mentioned a treasure trove, right? Because those are things that may be holding people back or concerns that they have. And being able to answer those, I think that helps a lot of people understand why it's such a good opportunity, right? For sure. So when it comes to these kinds of questions, I mean, I'm looking through your page here. You also got a lot of really great people they were kind of had your back, right? It's people saying like, I'm getting into the solar ever charging installation distribution system. This sounded really interested. I like the idea of coming up with an alternative means of getting energy. Great team, like the prototype. I'm proud to be an investor. You really had a lot of people that are kind of, you know, have your back here with this project. Yeah, so that that's one of the most exciting parts because as I told you, uh, we want to build a community of the people interested and it started working actually already because 
people not only you know in western they are saying like i want to bring you to our country so i want to go and talk to people how how to make it happen what are the regulations and how i can help you so people give some valuable advice people uh, tell that okay i'm good in this if you need some kind of services in this area contact me so yeah that that's what we wanted and we are really happy to get it and how do you think the majority of these people were discovering you? Was this from WeFunder itself? Was it from your own outreach efforts? How are people discovering you? I guess it's both. Yeah, WeFunder helps a lot for sure. We had our database, of course, but WeFunder helps. And when you were engaging your own database, what was that communication like? Were you sending out emails? Were you texting them? Were you calling them? Were you um, posting on social media? What kind of stuff were you doing there? We were sending emails. And in terms of that email, was it just like, hey, we're doing this raise? Were you talking about your perks? Like what kind of communication were you sending? So yeah, we were sending updates. First communication is uh, yes. So we are raising money on WeFunder. We're briefly talking about our progress, where we stand now, what is our goal, giving details about the campaign and the conditions, because most of these people are like, not familiar with equity crowdfunding. So yeah. We, we both gave them a perspective on what's going on in the company right now because they were familiar with the company. So just some updates and uh, giving them more understanding that it's safe, it's easy to invest through the founder. Yeah, it makes, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And also, it's like you said, it's such a new thing that a lot of people probably are just like, what the heck is this whole equity crowdfunding thing that you're doing? So that can make a lot of sense. Yeah, sure. It's it's so easy. Yeah, when it comes to this opportunity, you know, why do you think that for people that are listening, that you're really primed as a company to redefine this space? Do you feel like you have a competitive advantage? Something you want to tell listeners about that you feel like is really going to put you ahead of a lot of other companies out there, or how is this really going to help you guys? What are you going to use this money for? So we're going to use this money for getting prepared for production. And we want to start sales in next year. And we already have uh, LOI signed. And yeah, we have things kind of ready. So we need to, we're working on the golden sample right now. So we need to get prepared for the production and start production. It's going to be not mass production yet. We're going to have pilot projects. And uh, this is first scene, then marketing. We need to work more on IP. We already patented, but we want to buy it on portfolio, patent portfolio. So that's the three casings. And for people who come and they're like, you know what? Geez, wind turbines and like those fans are so loud, right? They make so much noise and sound pollution. You know, what's your answer to that when people come in? And have that question. Yeah, we actually had the, the full update for, for this topic, uh, why we have low noise. Basically, we have very different principle of work and the blades are not moving so fast as they are moving in the traditional commercial wind turbines and we don't have twisting which creates infrasound. So, and we have special like damping system and the technology is very sought through because we understood that this is the priority to be able to compete in this niche and to be like an obvious choice for the people in this niche and uh, actually to pass regulations to even be able to be installed. Mm. Uh, in the urban and suburban environment, we need to work on noise. So that was a priority. Well, when you finally hit that half million dollar mark, and you know you have all of this funding, what did that feel like as a team? What, what you know, what was the story behind that when you saw that and that kind of crossed that threshold? What did that feel like? It felt good, of course, obviously. But yeah, we knew that we should one million. And we need to keep working. It, it gave us inspiration that people believe and people support. And yeah, it gave a lot of inspiration to keep working and uh, keep making improvements. 
Now, you mentioned your VC as being the one who kind of turned you on to this. Were these um, like smaller investors, you know, people putting in 100, 200? Did you have people putting in, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000? Like, what, what was that like? You know, the people that are really taking action on this? Yeah. Can you repeat? It's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm speaking too fast. Probably. No, no, um, you're speaking right, but I didn't get the, the question itself. Yeah. So in terms of the people who are really supporting this, are these people who are supporting at the 100 to $500 investment level? Okay, are they people in the you know, two to 5,000? What kind of investors do you find are really getting behind this project? Okay. It's very different. So we have some investors who invested like 20,000, 25,000. We have some investors who invested like uh, 100 and 200. So, but mostly it's, uh, let's say one, 2,000. Got it. Got it. So you obviously have, you know, come so far since, you know, initially launching and needing to get a couple of things in order there. Is there anything that you would have either done differently or anything that you learned in being live so far on, on WeFunder? Okay. So what would we done different? I guess we would care more about start and not just waiting for the things to happen from the WeFunder side, but make sure that we are on this email and we're going to be uh, featured there and it's going to be on time. That would, yeah, that would make uh, a boost from the uh, beginning. Then I guess we would start making updates early on and what else yeah i guess we, all, all the other we would just continue to communicate a lot with investors to engage them it sounds like people also really connect a lot with your story right mm -hmm. and even just to understanding the technology behind it so i'm sure those are, are really powerful ones you know it's just to keep hammering on it makes a lot of sense so i just had one a couple more questions for you so for you personally i mean you have a really interesting background right you're an organizational psychologist You've co-founded a hardware startup, an incubator, right? A DIY lab. What do you think about this whole equity crowdfunding thing and sort of what's happening now? Do you feel like this is a good thing? Do you think this is something that is maybe not a good thing? What do you feel about this as a new way of raising capital? Mm, I love the idea. I totally think that's the future. Like community is one of the most powerful since ever and we can see it from the other products which which we all know about like all the big brands they are standing with their community they caring about their community they they have full support and belief and and advocacy everything from their community their communities their brand ambassadors so that means a lot really a lot people can give you like resources power people can give you again advice inspiration money people can give you everything you need if you can build relationships with those people if you can yeah communicate respect involve them listen to them so yes it's where, where did that passion for relationship building and forming that community start for you was that always the case in your career or is that something that you kind of discovered as you went um i was always interested in people that's why i'm psychologist yeah. <laughs> and, and before before my first degree was in management which is as well about people so yeah i was always interested in people and i always understood that it's all about the people good people can solve any issue you might have good people can give can create opportunities good people can yeah, do whatever, because that's the most important thing for anything, basically, for work, for life, for family, for everything, relationship matters. And yeah, community is, is about relationship, which can yeah really bring you up or bring you down. So you need to... We have a lot of, you know, founders, entrepreneurs and creators, also investors, you know, listening to the show. And I'm sure they'd be curious if you had any advice on the organizational side of the equation or a tip that they could consider for you know, improving that focus on people 
or in building relationships within their team. Do you have anything from your own career you would want to just one tip pass on when it comes to building strong teams or building strong leadership, anything along those points? I guess the most important thing is look at each person who works for you or with you as personality who has his own beliefs, his own values, his own goals and vision and try to deeply understand who who he is the person in front of you and what is important to him and how you can be together and creating relationships when everyone wins and everyone is comfortable working together and creating a value for each other so yeah that creates a difference see people see and understand and be willing to recognize the person in front of you and yeah build relationships with yeah matter. i think that's extremely powerful and it's very exciting as well because i think that translates a lot of what we talked about in this interview so for example attracting investors or being attracted yourself to a particular mission or you know building a team like we just talked about so i really think that kind of threads throughout the entire discussion that we've had today on this. How long are you guys going to be live here on, on WeFunder? So the race will stop on March 10th. Okay, so for a while here. Yeah, we, we still have time to hit our goal. Okay, awesome. So first of all, where can people go to learn a little bit more about your campaign and kind of what you're doing here? So now we have found our page, uh, Soroka Energy, that's the company, and our website, sirocaenergy.com. Okay, and that's S-I-R-O-C-C-O, energy.com. Exactly. Okay, and I also know, it sounds like there are also some investor perks. Am I, am I, do I have that right? Yes, yes, we do have investor perks for okay, well, everyone invested more than 500 and any thoughts on, on what kind of those are? Or? So yes, there is a discounts for the wind turbines and there is discounts for servicing, not actually discounts, it's like free servicing and support for a different period, depending on how much you invest. Okay, awesome. So I'll be sure to include that link in the show notes. So my final question for you is, you know, if you could speak directly to the audience and we can end on this note if you have a final tip a final word of encouragement for someone who kind of like you and your team was bootstrapping for a long time and they want to get this out there in the same way that you have and maybe need a little bit of a push or encouragement or inspiration do you have some final word that you would like to share with that person uh, sure i guess i would suggest to go on uh be founder and just Check other companies and see that people doing it right now, people raising, and there are all kind of companies. It can be technological companies, it can be like uh, food, it can be movies, it can be almost everything. And people getting this support, people getting this belief from the community, people getting money to make their ideas happen. So you can do it as well. You can give this boost to your company and just just check it out and uh, talk to WeFunder managers just to get to know more. The process is quite easy. And if you are up to it, I'm sure you're gonna succeed. So good luck. Well said. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. And um, good luck with your next couple of weeks here live on the platform. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Man, I am so stoked that you are here. It means a lot to me. And also, you know, I think it's great that you're investing in your own education and training. Like that is so key. And particularly when it comes to something new, it's always like a shifting dynamic, a shifting terrain. And you have to kind of figure that out as you're going. And unfortunately, when something new, like for example, cryptocurrency or something new like equity crowdfunding, things are always changing. I mean, even just like yesterday, I was finding about new stuff when it comes to WeFunder. And so it's exciting. You always kind of have to have your fingers on the pulse. That's part of my job is just to share with you what's working, what's not, 
and the strategies and techniques that are making you more successful. So I, I really appreciate you. And I think that says a lot that you're willing to invest your own time in understanding this subject, which is also a labor of love for me. So if you kind of want to speed up this cycle and you really want to be like, okay, you know what? I'm interested in equity crowdfunding. I'm interested in WeFunder or maybe even doing one of these campaigns. Uh, or I just want to even find out is this right for me? If I'm outside the United States, can I do this campaign? If I'm in the United States, is this something that makes sense, right? If you want to figure out the answers to those kinds of questions specific for you, your category, your product, your, your startup, and what you're trying to accomplish, you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and we can discuss that in an intensive coaching call. In addition, you're also gonna get action items and other kind of homework and stuff that's related to that. So if you wanna check that out, go to this link I'm about to mention and you can learn more about booking a one-on-one -on -one intensive coaching call with me at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash coaching, crowdcrux.com slash coaching. I think this is honestly one of the you know best investments. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but I have people all the time, man, reach out to me even months after doing the call. I'm like, Sal, like that was so useful, right? Some of the stuff you shared and we were so successful. I really appreciate you. So it's really great to hear those kinds of success stories. And I love being able to have that impact on people's lives. And also, even to a small degree, um, with you know, the employees that they're now hiring with the funds, all that kind of stuff is so cool. It's like a ripple effect. And in a small way, you know, being able to add to that means a lot. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please give it a positive rating and view on iTunes or on Spotify. And if you're on YouTube, say something nice, a positive comment, or give me a, an upvote or come subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time.